the other driver who has won uh, one of the heats so far. Travis Taylor will be alongside him on the fourth row of the grid. Lucas Fruccia and Rene Lammers won an interesting, actually, sixth, uh, fifth row on the grid. The Dutchman and the uh, half Spanish, half British driver alongside each other for what will be certainly an interesting start. So they're going to get sent out onto the circuit, I do believe. It's not going to be too long. Just to give you an update as to what happened earlier on in the day, we had uh, William Go take the first heat in front of Brandon Carr and Federico Alrafai doing a great job in drizzly conditions. Miguel Costa and Max Garcia are in the top six, along with Lucas Flusha, and then Sebastiano Pavan, Patrice Kovalevsky, Ian Chu, and Sasha Avril. Really exciting performances. Only one driver eventually excluded, unfortunately, uh, from that race, and that was the very talented Frenchman Pacom Weisenberger, who had a technical nonconformity after a very trying race anyway. So it just went from bad to worse for him, sadly. And then we had Kia Nakamura Bird to take the victory in front of Harry Burgoyne and Freddie Slater. No change was made to that result. Uh, Leo Robinson and Rene Lammers from Christian Miles and Tiziano Monza. And then it is Ye Ruheng and James Ananyostadis in front of Edu Robinson, who ended up being classified in 10th place. A couple of penalties post-race, but nothing that really affects the top 10. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the race plays out now in very different conditions to what we saw earlier on, of course. And with an all-American front row, I'm sure Brent Cruz will be grinning from ear to ear watching as his comrades, Max Garcia and Christian Miles, take to the front row of the starting grid. It is going to be a very tricky race for them. And obviously the cadets uh, later will be just as... Uh, tough to watch uh, considering the wetness of these conditions but obviously they've got to make sure if we've got a, an awful lot of rain on the circuit which of course we have you have to take into consideration the fact that the drivers we're sending out onto the circuit are between the ages of 8 and 12 so uh, obviously uh, I have seen some very very good races in these sort of conditions with these youngsters but uh, whether you judge uh, these conditions to be safe or not for these guys to race, even with wet tyres, is obviously uh, up for debate uh, when you've got such a very, very tight battle. And it looks to me as though the X30 Mini heat has already been adjusted uh, from seven laps to five. So there will be just five laps of racing around the circuit. So I actually think under the circumstances, that's a very sensible decision. Yeah, definitely. You know, you don't want the, those drivers to take too, more, too, more, too many risks, actually, in those conditions, because the... Uh Grip conditions obviously are very, very critical at this point. And uh, yeah, from 7 down to fifth, uh, 5 laps in total will be the same for the next race if the conditions remain the same, which is uh, very much likely. That's for the minimum and the cadet that will follow just after. If the drivers make their way on the track, let's give you once again a roundup of the uh, starting grid with the front row being shared by uh, Max Garcia, Christian Miles from Miguel Costa and uh, Keen at Nakamura Berta on the second row. Then we have Paco Moisenberger, Harry Bergon, William Go, Travis Theo on the fourth row. Fifth row, Lucas Fuchsia and Rene Lammers from Federico Alarefa and James Agnogastinis. We have Bantaro Igashari and uh, Edwards Robinson on the seventh row. Tibor Remakos and uh, Maxence Verbrugge on the eighth row. Yusuf Martin, Kelly Jerry and Ishan Madesh on the ninth row, followed by Alan Show, Roy Show, sorry, Adrian Mustens, Matt uh, Corby, Hector Gerling, Tom Calender, Nicholas Frack uh, Kakis. We have as well uh, Kuhn Roy, Luca Orton, Max uh, Schillenmeyer, Jose Pinheiro, Nils Lenor, Hank Falk Jr., Emilio Ortolani, Oscar Nicola, Alonen Lori, Santiago Alves, and Aditya. We below for a total of 29 drivers in the thunderstorm of Le Mans. This is the Ayame International Final. Thanks for tuning in. And this is the, uh, the penultimate qualifying heat for the mini class today, opposing the group A and C. One driver unable to get out there by the look of it, and that is Emiliano Ortolani. The uh, Frenchman has not gone out onto the circuit, or certainly is not uh, tripping the transponder if he is out on the circuit. Now, for these guys, I'm fairly sure they are going to do two formation laps because uh, the conditions are very, very different for these guys. And uh, they don't have the experience to just jump straight into a race condition uh, without having uh, a proper run around the circuit. So they are going to have uh, another formation lap, which indeed they do. So uh, they're not going to be uh, starting a race when the grid is looking like that. And I think they forced that issue, of course, because they all kind of uh, formed together and went, you know what, no, we're not ready to race yet. Uh, we will race again very soon indeed although it says green flag in front of me oh no it's yellow flag now okay so uh not sure what happened there the, the uh, are we racing under yellow flags i think that might be what's happened there so apparently the race has started the time is ticking over should we have some sort of a yellow flag conditions for the yeah, race yeah i think or? we are under full course like yellows yeah, so that's right the race has technically started 
but we are under full course yellow conditions and there are a couple of drivers edging around the circuit but yeah the time has started ticking down that's something you don't see that often that's is it? not no I'm, this is baffling i have to say but uh, according to the timing screens in front of me time is ticking down we're under yellow flags so i think the race has started but anyway the drivers are going around they're in their positions they're going to form up in position again yeah, yeah they're actually slowing down on the straight line as you can see with the slow uh, panel being shown well the race is definitely on because the time is ticking so are they only going to get four laps of racing in then i think that might be the case you know they're going to go back for one rolling start and then uh, yeah one reduced lap for the race okay I, I didn't realize of seven i didn't realize that was the policy but apparently it is so they're going to come out of the final turn now and hopefully it's going to go green first time by and is that going to be green well i don't think so they're still yellows yeah there's still yellows around the circuit so well that means no overtaking doesn't it so we're under yellow flag conditions this is baffling i'm not sure i've never seen this before but they're under yellow flags and they are slow around the circuit so the fact that they're under yellow flag conditions at the moment very unusual so we've got yellow flags and we're on lap two technically speaking so the race has started essentially so well this is rather confusing but obviously the, the the positions shouldn't really be changing because of course they're under yellow flags and have been since the start of the race so they should still be technically in their grid formation the lights have not gone out yet but then of course the lights didn't go out so have you got any news for us guillaume yeah, I just came down to check and uh, obviously the drivers were not aligned sufficiently enough to allow the start to go. And uh, for the moment, as long as they're not aligned, the, uh, the race won't, be, won't, won't start actually, so the, they won't be released to do a proper start. So for the time being, as you can see, they have to slow down again, keep the position, no overtaking allowed. And uh, hopefully this time we're going to be able to red go flags, and red, red flags, flags. Yes. red flags. Now I think this has got to be down to the conditions. Yeah, definitely. I think so we're still discussing a lot in the... Uh, Race control and race direction. And well, the, th the thing is, as much as you sitting at home will want to see carts and young drivers racing wheel to wheel in wet conditions, they're 8 to 12 years old. You know, if it's too wet, you just can't let them race. That's right. That's, that's a safe decision. You know, that's the most logical one taken by the officials. They have the responsibility to let go or stop But there the are race. still a few drivers coming around. There are still a few drivers coming around. They didn't see the red flags in time. Maybe not yet. So... All right. Well, this is confusing because we've got some people... Well, no, none of them have come in. So they're going to stop on the start-finish line. Now, I'm sure this is down to partly the conditions, but also partly down to the starting procedure. They weren't lined up in position, ready to get the race started. But I thought it was quite clear-cut. If the conditions are not safe enough for them to run, then they can't run. So maybe at this point, yeah, they're gonna, yeah, they're all gonna have. Yeah, they're to gonna get out of the carts and they're gonna speak to them at the uh, front of the course. Now this is either going to be a message to the drivers saying you guys are not lining up enough e enough for this race to get started, so you need to sort your act out, or this is gonna be the course is too wet. It's too wet. I'm sorry, guys, but you, we we just can't let you race in this. And to be honest. I wouldn't really have a go at them for making that decision because it is incredibly wet out there. I mean, the seniors are going to find it quite tough when they come out later in these conditions. When you put eight to 12 year olds on a circuit like this, you know, you've, you've got to look at it from the realistic point of view. Yes, they all want to race. Yes, they all want to drive. And yes, they all want to get wet weather experience. But you were talking about this earlier, Guillaume. There's a limit. There's a line that you have to cross. And maybe at this point, we're already flirting with that line. Yeah, definitely. You know, with uh, such uh, difficult conditions, you know, it's about the safety of the drivers, you know, and you don't want to take any more risk in them crashing or, you know, sliding too much. And there's, then there's more, there's no race anymore, you know. And uh, you just need to make sure that every, every, everything and everybody is in safe enough conditions to race properly, uh, which is which might not be entirely the case. But in, th in those conditions, as there's no lightning or thunderstorm or anything like that, this is down to the uh, safety of the drivers and the uh, good, you know, the good procedure, the good procedure of the race itself. So, as the procedure, you know, uh, says it, the race director, as you can see on your screen, is having a word with the drivers, you know, warning them that the previous procedures were not uh, well, well, you know, well, well done actually. So they're gonna have to do it all over again, and this time. If there's, you know, there's no more respect of the rules or respect of the, the alignment and, and the positions, the yeah, 
that might be the cancellation of the race lead to that. Uh, but considering as well the conditions, now it seems to be uh, stabilized in terms of raining, even though the rain is still very much up, the <laughs> up there. It's still falling, falling that's the yeah. thing. More water is being added to the circuit. It's not drying at all, and more water is coming out. They've been told what they've been told. Now, what's going to be the policy? Whatever happens, they're going to go back to their carts. Are they going to drive straight back into the pits, and that's the end of their race because of the conditions? Or have they been instructed how they need to start the race, and then they can actually race? Now, we've had a couple of people on the stream already... Uh, vent their frustration as such and basically make comments saying that it's it's not right they should be trusted with the rain but come on you've got to think about this from a realistic point of view if i was a dad and my kid was out there i would not want them to send them racing until they are absolutely sure that it is safe because i want my kid to come home walking and talking yeah keep in mind that this is just a qualifying race in some somehow we're not in the, in the final stages of this event not even in the final oh, or pre-final problems for eddie robinson problems for eddie robinson so he has well, he's got out of his cart. I think he's trying to put himself back into his original grid position. So that's what he's trying to do. So uh, Robinson, you know, deciding to uh, put his own silver machine uh, into the correct line. But yeah, at the, at the end of the day, I mean, you can be frustrated and you can be angry as much as you like, but this has got to be safety. And Shreds uh, has written there, it's not about trust. If an 8 to 12 year old gets injured, it's going to be worse than if you don't try. If you have to prioritize, I completely agree with you. As much as I love watching racing in the rain, and I really do, I love wa watching wet racing. It's one of my favorite things. You have to take into context, these are kids who are as young as eight years old, and they want to go to school on Monday morning, and they need to. Yeah, that's part of the responsibility of such an organization to take that into account, you know, and they have to protect the drivers. And that's, a, that's the first thing, especially in those conditions. So that's uh, fair and square. That's, uh, this is the right decision to do, uh, to make. And uh, so far, we're going to wait to see what the procedure was going to be. But definitely, they're going to go at least for one more lap. Will it be a, a warm lap before another running start? I think the, yeah, the race director is talking to the officials to do just to make sure what the best decision will be. So as, as, as with you guys, we are passionately waiting to know what the uh, next step will be. In a few seconds time, we're gonna have an answer. You would actually think that we've been cursed in this uh, IMA International Final last year already. The conditions were kind of unpredictable and changing at some stage in the in the uh, in the weekend for those of you who remember from last year on the uh, saturday the last heats of the master and the super shifter had to be cancelled because of a thunderstorm uh, falling on the uh, circuit actually one of the worst storms i have i have ever seen on the track then it was pretty much what happened but a bit less in terms of intensity on monday this, we're far from this of course today but once again this year the conditions are really incredibly changing in this part of the Fran of france uh, la Salle region it's all for the better of the show obviously but when it comes to a point as we discussed before when the uh, the uh, safety of drivers especially the young drivers is put into question there's no the, there's no open discussion you have to take the right decision stop the race or let it go but as soon as the conditions are back to normal so the uh Officials are just trying to signal to the timekeepers how things are going to work. And I think it's going to be five laps on the board again. That's what the uh, gesture is going to be. So are they going to continue again? Yes, it is going to be five laps. So the race has not started, essentially. It's going to be a complete reset. And there'll be five laps to go. So the race is, yeah, it's been officially reset. The entirety of the race has been reset, essentially, now. So the drivers are going through the uh, timing beacon. And uh, the competitors are now going to restart, essentially. So uh, there's been no laps continue. And there's only one that's not going. And I'm afraid that is the 850. That is Ta uh, Travis Teo. The Malaysian Travis Teo has not been able to get his car moving. So he is still out there on the circuit. And unfortunately, his cart is not going. But they can't put his cart on the right side of the circuit because it's too dangerous. They have to put it onto the left side of the circuit. And, uh, oh, you've got to feel for Travis Teo. He's had a really good weekend in terms of his grid positions. He's been, he was eighth on the grid for both heats, but unfortunately, he's not been in a situation to really, well, he was eighth in one and seventh in the other, but he's not been in a position to really capitalize uh, on that situation. So uh, he's had two DNFs, essentially. And we've got a stoppage on the, uh, the, on the other the side. Six, yes. That's Jose Pinheiro. So Jose Pinheiro is now out of the race as well. And uh, a couple of drivers not able to take up the start. So uh, that is not good for them. 
Yeah, two drivers out already as uh, the rest of the field, as you can see, is still under the red flag uh, conditions and they're going to have to uh, line up on the uh, straight line and uh, keep the pace, to you know, the pace within the rules, so between 30 and 50 kilometers an hour, just to make sure that the uh, starting procedure can be actually done. Uh, in